Welcome everyone to The Rift. I am your co-host Jeremy Culver, aka Darce. And I am Kyle Kyle Dimgloria. Kyle, this has been a great three weeks of the LCS split heading into week four. And Kyle, how have you been enjoying the game so far? And also, how have you been doing? I've been pretty good. Games were, uh, I mean, overall it was an exciting weekend. Uh, Cloud Nine's continuing to dominate, which is a good thing for me, being a Cloud Nine fan. Um, you know, there there was just a lot going on uh, this weekend overall, which made it really exciting. Uh, Super Bowl, LCS games, and I will even toss this out there, even though this show has nothing to do with it, the Invitational for Rainbow Six Siege. So it was an exciting weekend overall. It really was, and I will say at the same time I did watch that Invitational, uh, at least the Grand Finals for both uh, Xbox and PC, and had a grand old time because um, the viewers don't know, but we will just bring this up. Me and you have fallen in love with Rainbow Six as well as the rest of our friends, and uh, we are really excited for the Season 2 update that came out uh, yesterday because this is going to go up on Wednesday, so yesterday all right anyways uh kyle let's talk a little bit about how the teams are going so we're going to do things a little differently this episode versus what we have done in the past and we are basically doing a four-week update on our power rankings and how we think things have gone now i don't know if you have it in front of you kyle but i pulled out my list when we go to talk about these power rankings of what we originally thought heading into the season and how much that differs from my thoughts now and kyle Let's obviously start with EU because, again, our games always start EU first. Um, I will gladly admit, which, as you know, heading into the season, um, I gave this team a lot of flack because of the changes that they made. But I have been completely wrong about Misfits so far. Um, that team has been a contender and has looked fairly nice uh, so far heading into week four. I had them at ten. I would say I have them maybe around the number four mark at the moment. Um, Kyle, with let's start with basically Misfits and just kind of where did you originally have them? And do you agree that they're either overperforming from where you had it or are performing exactly where you power rank them? Um, I, I believe I had them down towards about the seventh spot. So I had them pretty low as well, but I completely agree about having them – um, you know, moved up in that power ranking, sitting about that four spot right now. They have uh, succeeded my expectations. I thought they would be a good team. I just didn't think they were going to be this good. Yeah, and especially with the, the offseason changes, um, for me, I had obviously a lot of question marks heading into it and had the, the disappointment of my boy and your boy, Selfie, not playing for the team. Which... Um, which, really quick, congratulations for their first 2 0 week as the EU Challenger Series did start. <laughs> and that is a great thing, and so hopefully we will get to see Selfie maybe in the summer split, knock on wood. Uh, but, uh, Kyle, what's the other team you want to kind of talk a little bit about from the power ranking standpoint of where either they're exceeding your expectations or they're overperforming at the moment? I'm going to go with Team Vitality. I actually had them at the beginning. Uh, I thought they would be a lot better team. I actually had them, and I believe it was like the fourth spot. I thought their team overall would have gelled a lot better, and they just have not done anything. It, they have looked poorly, and, and uh, definitely, definitely has struggled week in and week out. Now, we do want to do want to talk a little bit about uh, Hachani is leaving that team. Um, uh, various reasons, his performance hasn't been very well, but um, Team Vitality is citing he is suffering from insomnia, which is not allowing him to focus in the games, which is causing a lot of his problems. Because, remember, he was a very high-rated mm -hmm. uh, support heading into this from the Korean Challenger League, um, so... That is a concern, obviously, for Team Vitality as they're going to be looking to replace him. But, Kyle, I do want to ask, besides Hachani, what do you feel has been the biggest issue for Team Vitality so far? I don't know, man. Like, I, that, like it's so hard to comprehend what, what's, what the main issue is with that team right now. It just They just look like a mess. It, it, it's not like 
there's some matches that they do look like, oh, hey, look, they may be able to do something here, and it just doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. They just they, – they can't seem to um, put their foot down on the pedal and just go with it. it, it they just they, – they slowly start losing, and then that's it. It's like, oh, no, no more. <laughs> now, I – Personally, I, I kind of agree with you in the standpoint of it is it is kind of hard to like pinpoint something and say this is the issue. Um, for me, I think it's kind of what you just said, where it's like their macro play of aggressive calls or or getting a good team fight off isn't working out with this team at the moment. Now that could be because of Hachani's you know issues. I mean, this dude was especially on the Malzahar game. Uh, I think it was last week. Over and over, out of position, dying, trying mm-hmm. to put a ward out. You know, it was one of those things where when you're fighting any fight 4v5, you have a, you know, the cards are kind of stacked against you. But even without that, they were having a hard time pulling off big plays with, uh, you know, the team trying to get a good team fight. Even when they got a good team fight, it felt like they actually lost that team fight. But I do want to give credit to one person while I have the chance. And I would say, at least at this moment, Nuke Duck has really stepped up for this team to try and be that person that can carry the team. But I feel right now the load is too much for Nuke Duck, even with him stepping up and overperforming, in my opinion. for It's too much for him to carry at the moment. Yeah, he, he has performed at a pretty high level right now. And it's just when you're playing in a pro, you need help from elsewhere as well. And it's just not happening. Um I'm still curious. Uh, GBM has yet to make his debut, has he? In the he has not though. made his debut yet. Yeah, I, I'm uh, Joko the entire time so far. I'm really curious if they do end up possibly making that change as well. Um, I mean, you get the you, obviously you have the support change coming in. I'm curious if you see how that goes. If it still struggles, when are we going to see that GBM jungle? And that's where the obviously the interesting question, especially for Team Vitality, comes is, do you blame the jungle? Do you feel like there's not enough pressure? Does GBM maybe create a new dynamic or create better focus for the team? That's all questions that you have to you have to keep in mind. Personally, me at the moment, I wouldn't blame Joko because he hasn't done terrible in the jungle. Um, I, and I just don't know where where the loss is coming from at this moment. But I will say at the same time, as much as their record is showing pretty poor standings, um, the team I feel is better than that fourth place yes. spot that they're at. Like they're they're typically in the game, and then it just seems like over time you just start to be like, wow, they actually were behind, you know, way behind than I thought. Like, you know, everything looks like it's close, and then all of a sudden it gets to a certain point in the game, and you just kind of are like, wow, they're way behind, and nothing really happened. And I don't know if that's, again, team fight aggressions not coming through for this team, but I feel like they're a little underperforming at the moment compared to their spot. No, I completely agree. Do you, where do you have them at overall in your power rankings right now? Out of the rest of the teams, where do you feel like they're sitting at? I have them still basically at the same spot that I had them in the preseason, which is at number six. And mm-hmm. I agree, I think, you know, if they can figure out, especially once they get the support issue fixed out, fi- figured out with whoever they bring in, um, they could easily slide up to, you know, four or three, as I had said when I made them at six, even in the preseason. Um, they could also dr- continue to drop. But I have them sitting at that six mark at the preseason, and I continue. If I was giving a, a one through ten ranking at the moment, I have them about that number six, sixth best team in EU as well at the moment, which is why I think they're a little bit higher than the number four spot in Group B. That would obviously equate to around the eight, eight, nine mark. Um, I have them a little bit better than than that at the moment. Um, one team I do want to discuss a little bit. And this is obviously just because me and you both had still pretty high hopes for them. And obviously the record is not where they would probably want it heading into week four. And that is Splice. Obviously, Splice really did well in the summer split last year, um, performing, getting to Worlds. They come out. We talked about it week one. Didn't look hot at all. They've kind of righted the ship a little bit. They're at two and two at at the moment. And Kyle, so I want to ask you, are they a a downside two and two or are do you feel like their best games are yet to come um 
I feel like they have better games yet to come. The only issue is, is you're playing against a Unicorns of Love team that's playing out of its mind right now, and the H2K team that is really good as well uh, in Group B overall. But um, I think that creates some difficult matchups for them. But I, the team still, I believe, it's better, uh, has better upside than uh you know, than a downward spiral. I, I, I only I can only see them getting better. I don't know if they'll be able to reach the caliber as the other teams, but when when they do play uh, as a whole and out of their mind, they do look really good, and they just run you over. I mean, absolutely just run you over. And I would say, and I know we kind of talked a little bit about how do we feel the group standings are at the moment. Group A, in my opinion, still feels an easier group versus group B. Mm-hmm. And so like obviously I kind of figured Splice would be struggling a little bit when it comes to how they handle, you know, their group. But again, they come out week 1 against H2K, they get dominated, completely decimated over. They get a win over Vitality. Obviously good for them. They're going to need they're going to need that win. They lose to Unicorns of Love and then they come out and beat Origin. So their wins are not against struggling teams. Their losses against dominating teams. It'll mm-hmm. be interesting when they start getting in these middle of the pack games, and obviously we also will see the crossover into uh, Group A, which starts in this week where they'll be playing Misfits. I feel like that will start to be the test for one Misfits as as well, but two yes. Splice to kind of see. All right, Misfits are performing really well at the moment. Can you can you step up to the challenge? No, I completely agree. Overall, power rankings, since we're um, kind of going to be going into the whole crossing groups, uh, I still keep in Splice kind of in the fifth spot. That's where I had them starting the season. I still feel they're kind of at that point right now. But again, I think they have tremendous upside. I think they can take advantage of uh, the group crossing over because I think they are better than at least... Two of the teams up there, I, I'd say Fnatic is uh, could be a toss up, but they can easily gain some ground. I feel with the group cro- the group crossover. All right, and let and let's just kind of get this out there. Obviously, we don't really have to say too much on these teams, but Origin fairly bad. I mean, I, they're competitive, mm-hmm. but they're bad. They're not able to pull out these games. Rocat, I would kind of say the same thing. Competitive at least. Not able to pull out wins, though. Giants, hit and miss. I feel like they're, they they technically are better than what they're performing, but they can't close out series at all. Um, I don't know if you disagree with that sentiment, but I think that's a quick overview of those teams. The, you you pretty much hit the nail on a coffin, man. Like, Rokat, to me, number 10. I think they're the uh, – them and Origin are a toss-up on 9 to 10. That you could flip-flop those two, I believe. Uh, Origin, a bunch of, as Kreppel said, B-class players. They're all challenger players. They haven't really had a step in the LCS too much other than uh, Tabs, but they're but they're all kind of second-class players. But easily, 9-10, uh, Giants, I, I, I see them, sit, them sitting right above them. So that, I mean, <laughs> roughly, <laughs> as you Roughly said. exactly where I'd put them. I would disagree with Kreppo with the B-class because they are, again, a competitive team. Most of the games, most of the games they have been in, and but they can never seal the deal or it gets to the mid late game and they lose it, you know. But that's a that's a struggling team. It's gonna happen or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would have Origin at nine. I think Roquette currently at the moment is number ten. And again, I have Giants. I would have at eight. Um, so almost exactly kind of where I had them. Besides Misfit being at ten, they're obviously way up there. But the reason I quickly wanted to go over them because the last team I personally want to talk about and we can talk about you know another team in the motive if you want is that fanatic team i had fanatic number three i did say you know heading into the season that i thought the changes they made would actually be surprisingly good for them and that it would be a strong team because of the fact they were all european easy communication skills between one another and these guys had something to prove they did come out week one and did fairly well. They didn't get, obviously, the wins they were probably looking for, but they did do fairly well. Team has kind of been hit and miss basically since. They're benching amazing, calling it giving him time off, but they're benching amazing for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Kyle, I got to ask you, 
how do you perceive this Fnatic team at the moment and the quote unquote time off move with uh, Amazing? Um, I had them overall at like the number six spot. I I didn't really see um, too much on them, but I, I still feel they're kind of in the middle of the pack. Um, I, the team I feel. Y- they can still do compete. You're going to get those wins from them, but they're just not the powerhouse fanatic team that everybody hopes for. Um, and the amazing move, I think that's not a break. I think it is a benching. Um, he hasn't really been able to perform. I- I've said it before. When he's good, he's good, but there's he's way too inconsistent, and he does cause a lot of issues when he can't do anything. And, and, and it's a big... Uh, burden to try to carry um when uh you know situations go bad because when like he's kind of a classic when he goes uh when things go bad for him he disappears and yeah i agree um i'm just quickly pulling up some statistics some statistics because again we were just talking a little bit about how how amazing his performance has been and it hasn't been very good, obviously. Um, so he's only ahead of uh, Wisdom, Max Lord, Memento, and Kakao. Technically trashy as well when it comes to a KDA. Um, but in deaths, he basically is just ahead of them as well. His kill participation is towards the bottom. Um, you know, his CS per minute is also um, right kind of at the bottom of the pack. So, yeah. Not a very good performance so far from him. Um, definitely expected more, I would assume, if you were fanatic. And, yeah, I don't think it's a, a, a time off as well. I think it is a benching. It may very well end up being a time off where they're kind of giving him time to clear his head. They're going to bring him back in maybe for a series after these two weeks, see if it's helped out. If not, they'll go back mm-hmm. to whatever they're doing. But who, whoever gets pulled in and they bring him in, and if he does great, I don't see them even letting Amazing do that, come back and, and get a chance to see if it worked. They, this is basically a move that they're like, look, we're going to try to find something better. If we find something better, awesome. If not, we'll bring you back in and see what you can do. I, yeah, and I am going to have to um, – I, I still don't think he's as um, hyped as he once was. But I've got to give him a ton more credit from what I uh, claimed before. Reckless, even with the struggles of Fnatic, has performed well throughout the games. I mean, 28 ga- 28 kills total is not a bad thing for a struggling team. Um, I Granted, he has died 12 times. But still, for a team that's struggling, you're going to die a lot, especially when you're 2-2. Two and two. But still, he is trying. He's trying to carry hard with those 28 kills. It's showing that he is... Tr- trying you know he's he's working hard man and at this moment i will also give him credit for those 12 deaths of with him being the good thing you shut you try to shut him down and you know the rest of the team is not doing great at the moment so he's getting a lot of attention but as you said he's turning maybe that attention around to where he's able to try to be that right spot for the team but it's just not there at the moment Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle, before we switch over to NA, any any other thing you want to bring up about an EU or any team you want to also talk about? Uh, I just kind of want to bring up um, briefly Unicorns of Love, man. Like, I came in having them up there in the top five, top four, especially top four. I had them between um, – at the number three, I believe it was, looking at my list. And, man, they have really proved themselves. That hype around them – has really shown up, and, and they're um, an exile. Holy cow, is that dude going? He is a monster. Oh, 61 total kills right now. He's, 61. Like, that is insane <laughs> for three weeks. He is a monster. Um, I, I know me and you did give him some love heading into this season talking about the fact that he had proved himself and wants to continue to prove himself and i feel he is doing just that um i agree obviously for me i had unicorns at that five spot and i did talk about i thought that they could get up to the three spot but i didn't think they'd be better than h2k 
currently they are better than mm-hmm. H2K. I would almost, and we'll see as these cross groups start to happen with EU, I would almost call them the best team in EU yep. because of the way they've been performing. And as much as G2 has been doing really great and they're undefeated just like Unicorns of Love, in my opinion, G2 still has something about them that just <laughs> feels like it's not all there. Mm-hmm. And and that's tough to say because of what you know G2 does and what how they act and stuff and they are the reigning, you know, EU um, champions. But just something every time I watch their games it just doesn't feel like a dominating team when I watch, like when I watch a Unicorns of Love match, where it feels like it's been dominating, even when it's close. And, they, and they've Unicorns of Love have been in some close matches and almost lost some because of some, you know, bad calls. Overall, I always feel like, man, they're dominating the game versus G2, where I'm like, they're kind of letting this team hang around too much. Yeah, and the thing about G2 is you can thank Sven. <laughs> Because to me, Perks is still not – like, Perks is a really good mid laner, and you and I both know this. But he hasn't really shown up at, like we've hoped for for this G2 team. And I think overall, Unicorns of Love as a whole has, um, or has performed much better than G2. And as you said, you can argue the fact that – they are number one, and I, I'm almost tempted to put them at the number one spot in my overall power rankings list over G2 at the moment. And I'm really excited to see what happens when the two finally do cross paths. Yes, it will be interesting. Um, I will say this. Um, I th- I do think Perks is still really good in mid lane. Um, and I think he has been... I guess maybe like where he's been at in the past where I think he is, you know, top four, top five mid laners. He doesn't in die. EU, That's what it is. Not, but he's not the playmaker that mm-hmm. you kind of want on your, on your team. You know, your dominating team like you would see with in the past Ryu or you would see when Fabiven was, you know, when it, things were really good on Fnatic. Um, he's not that, but you're, you're exactly right. He doesn't die. He's a very safe mid laner when it comes to team fighting, and I think that's kind of what EU needs or they need at the team for G2 at the moment. But once they get to those world stages and they get to those international tournaments, that's when they need him to step up a little bit more. And I feel like right now should be that time he should be trying to focus on stepping up a little bit more. Because I think this team is strong enough regardless that even if he tries some different things, they're, they're, it's not going to be like, oh my god, now they lost this. They're, yep. they're still going to be – they're still up enough over the other teams that I don't feel like it's an issue. Yep, exactly, exactly. All right, well, let's talk over now into NA, which obviously is <laughs> something that me and you have a lot of vested interest into. Um, Kyle, let's start, I guess, with the first thing. And it's, again, one of those my bad questions, but – um. FlyQuest. Let's yes. just start there. Me and you both, heading into this, we talked about the fact we love the team. We're like, it's so great to see these guys who kind of gave us our love into the sport. Obviously, I'm not a C9 fan, but the domination of C9 when when the LCS kind of first blossomed into its own thing was awesome. And I obviously am always um, respectful of what they did. But me and you did not have high hopes for this team. They are currently tied for second. What the heck? <laughs> I mean, high is back. <laughs> they, he's playing out of his mind right now. Like he looks like the old high, like he that does. came into the LCS. I mean, it, it's amazing. Uh, overall, though, they have three guys that want to carry, and they all are, and they're all working well together. Balls is still somewhat of the issue on that team, but overall, Balls is doing his job. He's taking, and he's really not doing too bad at all. Like, I mean, he, he's putting in his work as well. But um, Altec playing as well as he can in the current ADC meta. Moon is absolutely going off because he's benefiting off the fact that High's shot calling capability still is 
better than anybody else in the league. And it allows Moon to play with like a solo queue mentality and shows why he is consistently in the top 10 in the solo queue rankings every single season. I mean, if I, we've talked about this before, and I think we talked about this in week two of the LCS. Maybe it was last week's episode. But if you're going to play with anybody and you're going to have, like, you're wanting to get a top tier shot caller on your team, high is the team to go to. Mm-hmm. That dude knows what the heck to call, what to do, and you're going to benefit from it. I do want to just point out real quick because you talked a little bit about balls still is kind of the sore spot in the top lane, but he technically is the third best top laner right yep. now when it comes mm-hmm. to KDA. He's at 5.7 behind Impact with obviously C9. He's going to be doing fairly well up there. And then Lorlo, which, you know, me and you sing praises about Lorlo's yes, uh, you know, growth and what he's been doing mm-hmm. over the years. Obviously, Ball's fairly low kills, um, but his overall assist and deaths are down you know they're like his deaths really low compared to a bunch of the others in the league and then his assists really high compared to others in the league so balls holding his own exactly what you said um yeah it's crazy to see this team because we kind of looked at this team again and we were just like guys gonna you know kind of have their former glory but they're not gonna do too much they may steal a game or two That's about it. But this team is stepping up to the challenge. And for me, it makes me wonder, because I still wonder, are they overperforming at the moment, or are they a real deal? And at this moment, at least heading into week four, I still can't decide. Because the teams that I feel like, all right, they did great, heading into this matchup, you know, they're going to kind of come back to earth. And then they dominate again. And I'm like, (laughs) man, like... You know, am I just not giving them enough credit? And I don't know at the moment because they're such a hard team to judge. I I think this team is just that good. But this week, coming up weekend, will really show and finally, I think, answer that question for us. They have to play Phoenix 1, which is playing really well right now, which we'll, we'll probably get into. In yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about but that's the team right under them. That's going to be a really good test. And then they play the clear number one. I'm just going to throw it out there because we don't really have to discuss it much. But my team, Cloud9, they are the best in the league right now. But they had to play them the second game for this weekend. So this week is a really good test for them in two teams that is easily top four. So this will prove if they belong here or if they don't. Yeah, I, I, I completely agreed with you in that whole statement because I had been saying, and I know I've told you before, I can't wait to see FlyQuest play Cloud9 because it would be a really good test and it's old school versus new Mm -hmm. school kind of thing. Um, But yeah, this is a great week to see where FlyQuest stands at the moment. I feel no matter what, let's say they lose both these games, they're still maybe number four, maybe five just because, you know, you technically could have TSM in there it's you know we could make some scenarios where maybe we move them to five but I think even if they lose these these two their number either number four I might even stretch and still put them at three because how depending on how TSM does yep I, I might move you know I might still put FlyQuest over them um but great test for them Let's talk about that Phoenix One team, though, for a second, because I know heading into this into this matter, I was really hyped about this team. I had them at number three. I know yep. you were hyped about this team, but you had them a little bit more conservatively down a little bit lower. So yeah, I, I do want to ask you, because of you having them more at a conservative level heading into the season, do you feel you were a little too conservative with this team? How are you? How are you perceiving this Phoenix One team at the moment? I, I think I was a little too conservative. I just wasn't sure because of communication issues, but as we can see, it is no issue. <laughs> <laughs> They're all playing great. Ryu's still making plays as he usually does. I just want to kind of um, – I do kind of want to uh, – I, I need to give credit to um, Zig. I think he's playing a lot better than I expected. Granted, he's not – 
he he is under a ton. Uh, he's about in the middle for top landers right now, so he's not way up there. But when you actually watch him in game though itself, when you watch his matches, the stats don't really show what he's doing for this team right now as well. So I do got to give Zig more credit than I originally thought going into the league, especially with the other top laners that is out there right now, Looper, Impact. You know, you could just go down the list on these teams. The top laners are insane right now. But he, he's holding his own for what he does. And, and I got to give him credit. And I think just overall, though, that Inori, that, I don't, that team is just – doing it man they're just doing it <laughs> they are and i do want to just say uh you know one thing that we do have to keep in mind is whenever we're talking statistics it can vary greatly depending on how many matches the team has gone in x y and z zig is basically in the middle when it comes to mm -hmm. matches played they've only played 14 and that's kind of in the middle and so basically all his stats are kind of right there in the middle you know um but i agree with you he is performing better than maybe I even would have given him credit for heading into, you know, this this split. Um, but this team is is doing really well. It's obviously right where I kind of had them at number three. Um, I I want to ask you this, this question before I give my opinion. Despite how this team is performing and how great they're doing, isn't it weird, though, still to think that Arrow is technically the number two ADC when it comes to KD8, but it really feels like he doesn't have that much of an impact in the game? Or is that just my perception when I see these games? Like, I just feel like maybe the the crazy plays that Ryu and Nori does overshadows what Arrow's doing in the game. See, I think that's what it is. I, I really think that's what it is. Arrow has kind of taken a sneaky stance. Where he's dishing out the Im out you know the damage mm -hmm. and he is getting kills although sneaky you can like he's really upped his gameplay overall kills and stuff but I'll get into that later but um Arrow though I, I think that's what it is when you watch Nori even Zig and stuff and Ryu they're making these crazy plays on the map getting people stunning people ca you know catching people out you don't notice like here's like you know Nori coming in for a double. But then you don't see it overshadows the double that Arrow also got in that that team fight. You know, like there's a lot of things that's being overshadowed by him, and I think it's just because he's he's kind of he's also fallen victim to the way the meta is. You know, with the you the way the jungle is right now, you have a lot a of playmaking junglers right now, so it, it is a lot flashier. But I I think he's just being overshadowed. And and that was kind of where I was I was coming from um, is I, I I feel like he is being overshadowed um, because he's still making the plays, but I feel at the same time like Arrow still kind of has maybe that like next step that we could be seeing, mm -hmm. and that could end up catapulting this team to that one or two spot. And I will say one or two because if he takes that catapulting step forward, maybe that's enough for them to match what C9 is doing at the moment. I don't know if it would, but that could happen. But I do want to also just point out, though, Arrow, least amount of deaths from an ADC. And we're already, you know, we've been talking about the much how much focus and easy it is to kill the ADCs at the moment. Arrow, 23 deaths, least amount of deaths at the ADC role. Um, so props to Arrow for obviously dealing out the damage and staying alive um, on the map. Kyle, another team I do want to talk a little bit about. Um, obviously, their record is not where they would want it at the moment and we're kind of going to talk to the, uh, talk about them in in the same pair and let's talk about team liquid and immortals um the reason we're talking about them obviously in a pair is because arguably the biggest offseason change was basically a trade immortals mm -hmm. gets dardock liquid gets rain over me and you both kind of talked about you know what Huge pickup for Team Liquid to get Rain over, and for Immortals, could be exactly what Dardock needs. Needs is a new new scenery. Right now, things are not working out in the moment for these two teams. So, how how are you looking at at these two teams, especially as they're both just trying to find you know some some footing so that they don't fall any more further down than they have been? 
they really need answers. Both teams really do need answers because they are they're falling behind in a in a time that like you you could see the clear dominance of the top four right now, and then from five down, it's just a crapshoot. <laughs> Like, it's just who wants to be better than the other team. And every time you think a team is going to make that turnaround, they completely look like crap the next match. And it, it, it's like, really, like, what just happened? What changed? You know, and I, with the Dardock and Rainover situation right now, I still wonder if Rainover is just not dealing with pressure well. Um, I'm so curious if... For the liquid standpoint, I'm going to toss it out there now because I've done nothing about rant about it for the last two weeks, and you've heard me multiple times. Please, I know he's going to play again next week just because they got the damn win, but Golden Clue, they need to put Link in just to see what happens. I agree. You don't bench, you don't, you're not necessarily benching Golden Clue. No. Just swap them out and see what seem, feels like Joe's better. Because who knows? Maybe Link will gel better that with Rainover, and Rainover can do more. Lorlo is clearly doing his job over there. Clearly. He is one of the best top winners in the NALCS right now. And and he's he's trying so hard, and I feel for that guy right now. Because he it seems to be the only one that's consistently playing well. Piglet's getting caught out in situations he should not be getting caught out because I think there's pressure of him trying to carry this team. Um, Rainover, I think, is just pressure being that guy without Huni finally, and he needs to prove himself. And then there's Golden Glue that by the end of the game, his stats finally balance out towards the other mid laner, but he loses to that point. He gets dominated till that point. Some matches not as bad, but he's always behind. And it's not to me. It's not a good thing to have in a mid laner. You need somebody to at least keep up or close. But you need somebody that can win against the teams that you feel are under you. And he's just not doing it. And he right now he's currently a one trick Corky. Like that. That's all it is. His Corky's not right bad. Now. Yeah, at least right now. Did. Yeah, at least right now, that's the only one. I mean, we've seen him do performances on Cassiopeia and stuff in the past, mm -hmm. but right now in the LCS, that hasn't translated for him. He got Corky this last week. That translated for him. Yep. So, yeah, they, he, right, right currently that he is just a one trick. And I got to say, he's made plays on Ori's at times, but there's other times. The oh. one team fight in specific, oh, my God, me being an Ori player like I am, I just – I wanted to rip my hair out. Me like, being are a you former main kid laner Oriana player as well? It was cringeworthy. Very oh, cringe -worthy. it was bad. And they really, I don't care. Just swap them, please. Just see what happens. You right now, you are two and four. You clearly are not gonna be catching up to the top teams right now. You need to find something that you could at least make a run to hit the top five. You know what I mean? I mean, they're five right now because they're tied with everybody else, but you want to be the clear half, top half, not the clear top bottom or bottom half. And, and I think that's a big issue with them. And then with the Mortals, I do not like their bot lane. Their bot lane is just bad. Cody Sun and Away. And I'm not saying they're bad players itself, but just that that team and the way that things should be gelling. They don't work. <laughs> yeah, and and for me, I think that could easily be an issue of Cody Sun being a rookie, a lot of pressure on him. It's a struggling team overall anyways. And then you have Ole. I don't know if he can speak English. So is there a communication issue in that bot lane? Who knows? Um, but I, I want to obviously touch on Team Liquid for a little bit just because, again, I, you know that is my favorite team. Um, but I agree with you. Lorlo doing everything he can. And then you look at every every other lane, and it's just like, what the heck is going on with this team? You know, the big, the big, big person that I point at, and it, we have talked about it, and I, I still think it's because, again, he might, he's probably has too much pressure on himself and needs to just play. But Rainover, mm -hmm. one of the top junglers 
in the Western Hemisphere, or almost even to say in the world, is last. Yes. Last in KDA for junglers, and he's behind Lyra, who just, just started. started playing. Now, don't get me wrong. That does help his stats, Lyra, because he has less games to you know to affect his score. But at the same time, he should be higher. He should be in that top four, if not top two, because it's rain over and it's not happening right now. Um, you know, I also, you know, as you kind of said with Golden Glue, you know, technically, statistic wise, as you said, it catches up, you know, towards the later stages of the game, but he is basically middle of the pack. But let's be serious. We're talking about NA at the moment. And in NA, we have a ton of of strong mid laners and the more you can get your mid laner up into that top echelon the easier things are going to be for you Mm -hmm. right now golden glue is not doing that at the moment i like i won't lie i like golden glue i think i like him because of the journey he's had to try to get you know to Mm -hmm. officially be the starter on a team i like that because of the underdog story however Like you already said, you signed Link. He's there. Put him in a freaking game. Put him in and see what the heck happens. Because right now, I mean, I know that you aren't the worst in the league, but you did lose to the worst in the league. So you can't be much worse than you are right now. Mm -hmm. So put Link in, (laughs) see what happens. And you know what? If it goes to crap and it does terrible, oh, well, you tried. You know what I mean? You tried. Yeah, for back in Garling Poo. (laughs) Well, <laughs> everybody yeah. is saying. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and man. then it's like, okay, that's why you didn't put Link in. So let's just let's just say that. Now, vice versa, I want to talk about um, my thoughts on Immortals at the moment. Mm. Say I will it. say this. I will say this. Dardock is holding his own mm-hmm. in the jungle, okay? He is holding his own. He's on a struggling team at the moment. So yes. he's not be able to – he's not – able to do anything besides what the team around him can do. It's very similar to what we were talking about over in EU with Reckless. Shining spot technically on the team right now is Dardock. Everything else on that team, you kind of look at it and you're like... Throw his name out there. <laughs> what? Throw him Throw him under the bus. Throw his name out there. <laughs> <laughs> Pope <laughs> Bouncer, <know>? man. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to throw him out there just yet. I was going to start with Flame. I had said heading into this, this might just be a dude who Mm -hmm. wants to try to recapture his former glory, and right now is wanting to just capture his former glory because that dude is, you know, at the towards the bottom of the top lane. And right now, as we've already talked about, the top lane is a really strong, Uh you know, area right now in NA. Now I'm gonna get to Poe Belter mid lane. Holy crap! What is going on with this? I I I I love this guy, and this is embarrassing. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it is pathetically bad right now. Like he is extremely average. It it it, it just it looks terrible. Here's I mean, my question for you, and I wanted to ke- I wanted to start you or ask this now before we you you know kind of go into it. We know what kind of mentality Poe Belter has. Mm-hmm. Do you have a feeling how bad he is playing or how bad he looks right now is because he's like, forget this team. No, he is. No, that is. To me, it's 100% that. I think he's given up already. Like, this is a 100% tilt pole belter, in my opinion. Like, because we all know pole belter's a lot put, better player, but there's others that never believed he was that, uh, you know, the caliber of a player that you and I put him at. Um, Thorin, example, has come out and said, this is pole belter just finally showing how average he really is. Which, but to I me, it's just he—he's he, he, on a very—he's str- on a struggling team right now, and um, right now I, I think this is him with with the mentality that he has and, and the ego he has and everything else. I think he has just given up. He is on tilt so bad right now that he has just given up. Mm-hmm. And, and and then to feed off of that, I wanted to ask you, even though Dardock is doing well. Do you feel the egos right now for that team is what's kind of killing probably any I, 
progression forward? I don't even think it's between those two. I think I and almost I'm not like... saying I'm not saying it's between those two, but I, what I'm talking about is just the egos that we know those two at least have. You can only imagine what ego flame has. Oh yeah, Cody oh. Sun. Cody Sun. I'm gonna give him. You know, I'm I'm gonna c- cut him some slack. He's a rookie. Probably doesn't have too much of an ego at the moment because he's nope. just trying to prove himself. Ole could have an ego. I don't know too much about it, but. The top caliber team uh, tier player Flame was. Mm-hmm. The ego we already know Dar- Dardot can have, and we the ego we know no, Bobelt has. has. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel the egos are hindering any progress forward this team is going to have? I could say yes, just for the fact that I feel like they're just – if things don't go the way, this is what happens. They just – whatever. They play their own game. They do what they want to do. It's no more like, help. Let, let's do this as a team. Let's do that as a team. It's, I'm going to play what I – I'm going to – you know, complete solo queue. This is five randoms going into solo queue right now. Like, I'm going to go queue up for right, right now, and I'm going to join a match, and here we are. These are my other four. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, completely agree with you. Um, and – I will be completely honest. There are very few teams that I watch week in, week out, and like kind of want to see them struggle. And for right now, like when I watch this team, I I don't want them to struggle. But at the same time, it's like, man, like he, you, you guys might, you guys just need to forfeit your game. <laughs> like, oh, it's bad. They need a. It, it's almost like hopefully, like. The issue with their ego, too, is you would want a situation like this to be their wake-up calls. Like, okay, guys, listen, we really got to mellow ourselves out and really focus and, you know, just just bring ourselves back. Let, let's calm down. Let's let's do our thing, and we'll let's compete. Let's do it, you know. But it's just with the egos they have, I don't see them doing that. I don't see it. I, they can't bounce back. It's going to be a – it's the spring split of the Immortals tilt. Like that's what – it's nothing but tilt for that team. And um, I, I see the struggle going to continue to the end of it. I almost at this moment, despite the fact that they have a 2-4 and four record, I almost would have them at number 10 in a power rankings because oh, of I know. the way they've been performing. Like I was just going to ask – where do you have Immortals and Liquid right now? Where do you feel they are at? And well, I know uh, you may give Liquid a little bit more credit since you are a fan, but I, well, player-wise, though, I think they are better than Immortals. Here's what I want to say real quick with, with Liquid. Obviously, by pre-rankings of having them at number four, um, I still think they have that potential because, again, as you just said, player-wise. But they're not they're not number four right now. There, there's no way I would put them in number four. I would probably put them around the the six mark mm-hmm. at the moment, um, and that's just because as much as they are struggling and you know things are looking bad, if you look at their the schedule they've played thus far, they've had their losses basically against some of the stronger teams. Yes, minus minus really the team envy, but at the same time. Who knows what this Team Envy is going to be because now they technically have had their full team with Lyra for a week headed into that Team Liquid match. They beat Team Liquid. No one expected them to beat Cloud9, and obviously it didn't happen. So who knows where that Team Envy team is going to be moving forward. But I have them around six because most of their losses have come to the top or top tier teams, mm-hmm. and their wins obviously have came against some of those lower tier teams. So I give them get, put them at number six. Yeah, I could. That's where I kind of have them around the six, seven, like at least six, seven. Yeah, I have them about that mid. Yeah. Then the thing is, when it comes to immortals, is technically, technically, like you know, based off their their score, I, you would think I'd have them maybe at that seven mark, maybe at the eight mark. Like I said, me, I would argue they're at nine or ten because of the way they've been performing, the way that things have been going, and then you know, as well, you look at the matches they've done. They've technically lost to, you know, the top tier teams. You know, they lost, they beat Echo Fox. They lose to TSM. 
They head into week two. They lose to Cloud9. You know, they beat Team Envy. Then you head into the last week. They lose to Phoenix 1. And then, you know, they lose to FlyQuest. The top tier the top tier teams are beating them. But it's just the way that they look in the games that just makes me go, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. wow. At least in Team Liquid's games, expect, except for a few, like, they've pushed almost every series to three games. But <laughs> at least they look competitive in these games. There's there's times with Immortals I'm like, dude, they look like they just rolled over and died. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and I... that's my biggest that's my biggest thing with the with those two teams is kind of where where I, why I have them at a difference at the moment. We will see, um, you know, in this next week, kind of where they stack. Obviously, I'm gonna say Team Liquid is not gonna beat Cloud Nine, so they're gonna be two and five heading into their match on Saturday, but they will be playing against Immortals, which will be a good standing of where do these two teams stack at the moment? Mm -hmm. You know, that is a good match of, you know what, these two teams are struggling. Now they're going head-to-head. Who actually has uh, an advantage at the moment or, like, you know, a better stacking cards? And um, at right now I think it's Team Liquid, but who knows, once that head-to-head matchup comes, I could be flip-flopping and putting Team Liquid at nine or ten, and that would hurt me. But it it could exactly be true. Yeah, right now I have um, Immortals at nine or ten as well. Um, since we're kind of talking bottom half, um, Envy, you kind of touched base. I can't really say what they are yet since they just got their team together. I will say bottom half at the moment, but this is a team that we're gonna have to actually give an extra week on, just or two, just to really see what this shapes out to be but i do kind of want to talk about obviously the hyped uh team dig and i want to kind of touch base on clg's performance because you did have them ranked a lot lower than i did but um right now i do want to say though before we get too much in dig they are one in five they do look like a mess at times but again they've had a tough schedule Mm -hmm. (laughs) so they they played they they most of their losses has been against top teams. Yes, and and let me let me kind of be, I guess serious when it comes to Team Dig is they, I am still really hyped about this team. Mm-hmm. I really still think this team is good. Um, obviously their record is not reflecting it, um, and they haven't looked as good. I will say in the recent weeks than they did early in the season because they've they've been on a five game losing streak. They won week you know, their first game against Phoenix and they haven't won since. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they're still really like in my mind, and I'd have to go back and watch these games again, but they're still really competitive in these oh, games. Oh, they are they still they still do so much. And then they just can't. It just seems like they can't. They can't finish the deal. They can't seal the cake. They can't put in the closer to win the game for them right now. And that could be this team is just going to take longer to gel. And we could see them as a second half of the spring split turnaround team yep. that really starts to propel forward. Because someday, Chaser Keen. I know I'm not a, a fan of Lot as much as you are, but still, that bot lane. None of these guys are bad. I no. obviously, as you know, love someday. I still think he's one of the top you know, his t- top uh, top laners in the in the NA LCS, if not in the world. And I'm very sh- like Keen is a really strong mid laner. Mm-hmm. As much as he plays these goofy, crazy picks at times that you're just like, where the heck do they come from? He's still strong, and he's still somebody that teams can't overlook. I just don't know at the moment. What exactly is the issue? And the only thing I can come to conclude with is this team just needs more time to gel. I I, I completely agree. I think that's the issue. And them trying to learn to gel came at a bet. They had a rough schedule to start out with for a team that needs to figure things out. Like, I mean, when, when you, like as you said, you come in, you play Phoenix 1, it, it's your show-off day. Hey, look at us. You beat them. All right. Then you play the clear number one favorites, Cloud9. They lose that. And then let, they let's play, be serious. We talked about it. They could have easily have won oh, that yeah, series. Oh, yeah, they could have. 
they played well. Then they played TSM, another top top three team. <laughs> then they played Echo Fox, which we'll get into eventually. They did lose that one, which I was expecting them to win that. That that did surprise me there. Mm-hmm. That that was kind of their bad loss. And then in week three, they play FlyQuest, top four team, top five team. And then they played CLG, which CLG, uh, I, I did, we did say we, we're going to talk about them too as well, is a team that you never know which week they show up. They'll beat a strong team one week and compete against one, a good team, and then they'll struggle against a bad team. Like, they are a very inconsistent team overall. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and you know, again, who knows with this Team Dignitas team at the moment. Maybe me and you just have so much – you know, love for the players on this team that we think they're going to do, you know, turn it around. But mm. I, I just, I look at this team, I look at what they've done, and I especially look at how matches have been thus far for this team. And I'm like, this team is too talented to really be sitting at one and five. They, like, you know, they, this team is too talented to be one and five and be like, they're a one and five team. I think it's a, a team of they're either. They need more time to gel, or they just need, I guess, a, a turnaround. Like they, like maybe they've lost some confidence because of these losses, mm-hmm. and they need something to just kind of boost them up. And it could be an easy, simple win against maybe an Immortals team or something. But you know, this team is better than what they're performing. At the oh yeah, like clearly in the standings, they're better to me than three, maybe four of those teams. Clearly. Yeah. Well, now let's talk a little bit about that CLG team. I'm going to first start off with, I told you so, um, but <laughs> um, oh, all seriousness, this CLG team, a lot of people still did have hype for them because of didn't make any changes. Overall, you would think that this team would stay pretty strong because of what they had done in the past with this team. But I said, we talked about that the, the summer split. And and I we had said clearly as they went to Worlds, this was not a team we wanted to represent us. Mm-hmm. They turn around, they don't they don't do terrible at Worlds. They did okay, um, but it still wasn't a very strong performance. They turn around here, make no changes. You still had them pretty high up. I had them at number seven. They come out and they're not doing good. And I will say, they made Team Liquid look like a dominant team. When they played each other week one. Mm-hmm. Aside from that, Kyle, how are you interpreting this CLG team at the moment? Where would you stack them at a ranking if you had to? Very, very average. <laughs> like, I still feel like kind of where they're at now in the standings. I would say they kind of fit that role of that number six ish spot. Um, because I think they can be better than other teams, but you just don't know when they want to be. Um, it's odd because I still really like their bot lane, although Aphromu is having, to me, a very off split. He hasn't performed the way that Aphromu, you know, the the way that we know he can. Stixay, I feel like, is trying to do what he can do. Who he's playing better than I thought. X Smithy's somewhat holding their hold. Darshan needs help. That he dude does. is bad right now and i feel that's the it, it's weird to say one lane lane is necessarily causing the whole team to crumble but i don't know like he's he's clearly to me the worst on that team right now well statistics wise he you arguably he is the worst team um when it comes to kda he is technically middle of the pack um but his impact is, is not there. He has the worst kill participation on his mm-hmm. team. Um, so, yeah, KDA isn't terrible, but kill participation is a huge thing, especially for top laners. Um, that's usually who you would fight around. You would, might fight around, you know, your jungler, but you typically fight around the top laner, and it's just not there at the moment with this with this guy. Um, it's it's hard for me again i have a very hard time rooting for like a team to not do well and so like for me as much as i put clg at seven i kind of wanted them to to obviously 
you know, prove me wrong. Um, we have friends that are very big CLG fans, and I do give them crap all the time. But it's just like, this team is where I thought they would be. They're a seven team. They didn't mm-hmm. make any changes. This team didn't move forward. They didn't do anything in my mind in this off season that made me think they're going to be any different than what they were heading out of that summer split. And they they're not. And so, like for me, like I I feel there's nothing else for me to say about this CLG team because they're exactly what I thought they would be, mm-hmm. and and they're showing it at the moment. Hopefully, me, they can figure it out. But right now, I don't think that's possible. To me, they're the status of the old Cloud Nine team, as in not like the old good Cloud Nine team, but like you know, right before they finally decided, listen, we're we're bringing in Jensen. Impact. We're making changes, guys. I feel like this is a very tight, t- tight knit group, and I, I think after this split, they may finally take a step back and say, "Listen, we, we're going to have to break things up. We're going to have to make these changes." Yes, they did lose double lift. They did make that big change, but they brought in Six A, and he's played well. Six A has played really well. And that shows you, you can't find players that could fit a role for you. And I feel like that's what they really need to do. I feel like they need to really take a step back and be like, listen, Darshan, you, you, you've you done what you, you know, everything you could have done for us in the past years. You know, you're a reason why we've held a, a top, you know, uh, of the tier in a, uh, you know, in multiple splits and we thank you but we need to go our separate ways like they really need to look at them themselves as a team and really think about finally making these changes because if they don't they are going to continue to be this just very average middle to the bottom of the pack there's only two people on this team currently that i would actually full-heartedly keep and obviously one of them is if he's willing to stay and that's Aframu and Stixe. Mm-hmm. They're the only two right now at this moment that I would keep. And the others, I would be like, thank you. Hopefully you find another team, but we're, we're looking elsewhere. I like Xmithy, especially I've been a, I've been a fan of Xmithy. Um, and, you know, you, you've heard me talk about this. Even during the times where people were like, holy crap, Xmithy sucks. You need a new jungler. I always kept saying it's he's not as bad as you're thinking. It's just right now, you know, the meta doesn't doesn't fit him as much as he wants to or X, Y, and Z. And technically, he isn't doing bad when it comes to the jungler spot. Mm-hmm. However, at the same time, he's kind of that middle of the pack guy, and he's been playing for a long time. It's one of those things where it's like, all right, you, you gotta you gotta inject some fresh blood into this team. Stick say yes, fresh blood, but it's not much elsewhere. And Hui, I know, again, kind of a fresh blood in the mid lane and stuff, but he has not been what he was when he first stepped in and when he first showed up, where people always talked about that he was kind of like the N.A. faker. And he did some crazy plays when he first came onto the scene that we were like, holy crap. And then he's fallen off since, and he's ne- he's never really gotten back to that point. Yep. So for me, scrap top lane, scrap jungler, scrap ADC, or excuse me, mid lane, and you keep Stick Say and Aframu if he obviously wants to stay. Um, but I think I think again for me, this team is exactly what I thought they would be, and they're at, they're exactly where I thought they would be at. Extremely average. That's the way I feel that team is. Just when exactly. I look at him, it's just very me. <laughs> exactly. Um. Now let let's us let us because we have been talking about this quite a bit. Let let us just touch on the last team that I really want to talk about um, real quick, and that is the Echo Fox team. Mm-hmm. Um, now heading into the split, I rated them at number eight, and I had talked about basically I thought that you know I I I like the team, and I I thought the changes they made might be good, but didn't really know about Acadian, but I didn't feel there was enough changes to do anything. Looper, I thought was a great pick, bring in. We talked about Froggen, basically past his time. Talked about that I like Keith, but I didn't know what he could perform in the ADC role because of the changes. 
let's first give praise where praise should be. Acadian is a mm-hmm. monster. Rookie Dude is a bad. monster. Mm-hmm. And, and that's great for Echo Fox, especially, you know, moving forward because dude is a rookie, obviously. So that that's like you got you got a solidified jungler, man, and and you got to hold on to that dude. Um, but now let's kind of kind of I guess hit the nail on the head when it comes to Echo Fox, and this team just can't finish games out at the moment. No, nope. And, where do you find the problem is? Because Froggen's doing better than probably I would have anticipated. Dude, I, Froggen's playing really well. Looper's doing about what I thought he would do. He's mm-hmm. a strong top laner. Acadian, monster, as we just talked about. Keith and Gate, not doing there terrible. There we go. Uh, technically, they're not doing terrible, no, though. No, they're not. They're not doing terrible, but I still find situations in matchups and matches that tend to end up falling around Keith again. <laughs> And there was so much hype around this dude, obviously, when he had his sub games, like, he, you know, when he came in briefly and just dominated and performed as much as he could. But to me, he has really struggled um, at getting caught out towards the end of games. And there's times that it's cost matches. And... I don't think he's evolved enough. Involved enough. I mean, he out of the ADCs right now, he does have the worst kill participation he does. out of the whole group. And um, By over two percent. Yes, and um, he also has the worst uh, CS per minute. So, you know, you could see he's behind. And he it, has it, the most deaths. Keep. Say that. Yeah, I'm, uh, you can see in in very important stats in the stat line, he he he's the worst out of the ADC class, and I think that contributes in the uh, the struggles. Granted, it's not just him. At times, there are times in the match where anybody gets caught out, you know, at any given moment. But I, it's just he's not doing enough to to solidify that extra damage because he dies too early in the fight and. The rest of them can't necessarily clean up the rest of the other team. Now, I will say, when it comes to Keith, I, I talked about this with you, obviously, off <laughs> the podcast. But when Keith was leaving um, Team Liquid, I had kind of said, I think that's a bad mood for Keith. I think he would have been better suited and probably would have um, succeeded more if he stayed with Team Liquid versus going elsewhere. And I feel like that's kind of what's happened, basically, is that after he left Team Liquid – the team play hasn't fit him, and he hasn't been able to find a support that fits him like he did when he substituted in for Team Liquid. Uh, because he played long enough in that in those sub games that people got video, knew what he was doing, and they probably planned around him, but he still was able to perform because of what the players on Team Liquid were able to do and keep mm-hmm. him alive. That's not what's happening on these other teams. Um, Here's my question, or this is where I was kind of going towards heading into this before we got into the the liquid discussions is, again, Froggen is playing really well. He's doing way better than I would have anticipated. As I I said, I thought he would kind of be over the hill, relatively speaking, when we're talking about (laughs) the LCS. Um, But I thought he'd be over the hill kind of thing, and it was kind of like, you know, you should consider hanging it up. Doing really well. Great assist numbers. Kills, meh. Deaths, meh. But great assists. Like, he, he's in a lot of these team fights. But is he still shot calling? And if so, how much blame do you give him the fact that they can't close out these games because this dude is a veteran shot calling mid laner? If he is still fully shot calling, you have to give blame the shot caller. I mean,. Most of the time, you have to blame the shot caller. Granted, there, are, like I said, there are situations. There was a couple. I can't pinpoint the exact games, but I know there was like at least two of the matches that there was a team fight that was completely lost because Keith got caught out way too early in a fight, and that hurts. Granted, there was also one time that in a fight where. 
Keith clearly was okay, and Gate completely. Um, this has happened <laughs> on a couple teams now, actually. <laughs> Very surprising. The support flashes <laughs> over their ADC, and the ADC gets hit with an Astro or something, <laughs> and completely gets deleted. Well, there goes that fight. But um, you gotta somewhat put it on shot calling. But there's also times you got to put it on positioning in a certain play because the call might have been a really good idea, but positioning and setting up for that specific call could have been very lackluster and end up really causing it to look a lot worse than the call actually was. Yeah, and that's kind of my thing where it's like, is Froggen's shot calling slipping or is it basically the – him trying to corral everybody to listen to his shot calls and i don't know what to do or i don't know what it is at the moment obviously we're not there we're not in the house we're not in the mm -hmm. games it's listening to the voice chats but their main concern at the moment is they can't finish out games oh. and when you think about not finishing out games you look at the shot caller mm -hmm. um also i like i like echo fox it's just I don't know if they necessarily need changes or if it's just they need to be like, hey, listen to Frog. <laughs> I think a lot could be with this too, but it also gives them the surprise factor on the rest of them. But how much is this no one screaming against them? It hurts so that, them as well. That, that is crazy. Is that, that That is rough that nobody is willing to practice against this team. Now, let's keep in mind, I will say this. No one wants to scrim against them because of some of the allocations. That the allocations of the come coach. up against, yeah. you know, Echo Fox. However, I think that does hurt them, mm -hmm. which is really sad because of what Acadian is doing. Because for me, in my mind, I hear no scrims. I think of a rookie dude needs scrims, and so I'm like, is being on Echo Fox hurting, you know, Acadian's growth ceiling? And I hope not, because this guy is a monster, and I want to see what this dude does as he, you know, progresses forward in, mm -hmm. in the LCS. Um, but yeah, it, it, that 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 has to play a factor, and I think it, it plays a major factor. Yeah, it, that's rough for that team, and I do feel for that team for no one wanting to scrim against them, because I, like you said, even without scrimming practice like that, Arcadian still putting up crazy numbers now is it a surprise factor because no one is screaming against them so they don't really see what this dude is really potentially doing but i think it also skill caps him because of the fact that he doesn't really get to really get the in-depth feel of certain situation and matches to really um take that next next step forward in, in those team fights baron fights anything that he can uh you know as i said just how much higher can this ceiling be with those little scrims here and there? Yeah, and that and that's my thought process on it. Um, I will say when it comes to like the surprise factor, obviously I think there there is a small portion of that because you know if a team doesn't know what's coming, they're not mm -hmm. going to know what's coming. However, again, we have gone through three weeks. Echo Fox has played a number of games. Mm -hmm. And so even in that third week, teams knew what was coming from Echo Fox or what was coming from Indian, oh, yeah. and he still put up things. He still put up numbers. And that's where I'm basically where I'm like, this dude is a real deal, but I just hope this isn't hurting his growth ceiling and, like, this is the best we're ever going to see from Acadian because he won't be able to hit that next level now that no one's screaming against this team. Yep. Because – and we've seen it even in pro football sports. Player could be great, you know, but then he hits a cap ceiling because of the coaches around him or the practice squad that he goes up against because he's not challenged outside of the game. And if you don't get challenged outside of, you know, your actual matches or these actual series, then you're not going to continue to grow. Remember, this is – as much as the games are technically, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday – you are playing two series. So you're playing either Friday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then if you're not being challenged by these, you know, scrims the rest of the time, how are you expected to continue to grow? Yep. But 
that's obviously something that we will see as this continues moving forward. So, Kyle, before we wrap up this episode, is there anything else you would like to add or talk about before we send this show off onto the ceiling and off <laughs> into the ever well realms of your the listeners' ears? Uh, just really quick, uh, briefly, we don't even have to go in depth in it. Um, Thursday, man, we both agree. G two H two K match to look forward to. Yep, yep. I don't, you? I don't think it's any question. Um, see, now here's the question, or my uh, my thought on that is, um, which H two K team are we actually going to get? Mm-hmm. Because I still think they're a really dominant team, but they haven't been, I guess, always the cleanest. I am going to, at this current moment, give the slight edge to H2K still because of what's kind of been going on with G2 Esports. Um, but I think it goes three games, and I think it's a really close uh, 2-1 victory. No, I completely agree. I'm just going to stick with the EU really quick. Uh, Friday, I'm go- uh, Splice Misfits, I'm really personally looking forward to. Uh, it's going to be a test for both teams. Uh, Spice, what what can they do against a Misfits team that does look like an overall power rankings should be top four? And we know Spice has a better ceiling than what they're showing, just in a rough group. So, but I'm going to actually give the, I'm going to go with Spice though. I think they pull the upset. Really? Yeah, I think they pull the upset on Misfits. I think they come out and, and they show Misfits what Spice should be. And I, but I do think it's going to go all three games. I, I I agree in that factor. I thought I was going to be the surprise one to still go with Splice. Again, could be that I'm playing favoritism, but um, <laughs> I agree with that. Now, I will say this real quick because obviously the Saturday games, in my mind, like if you're going to skip a day not watching, you know. Saturday's it. <laughs> Saturday is it. Uh, it's pretty much going to be a slaughter, a slaughter uh, for both. But I will say the game that I am actually interested in seeing is that G2 versus Origin. Just because, again, I've talked about Origin has been pretty competitive, um, and G2 always seems to give these teams too much time to stick around. And so I'm, like, interested to see, <laughs> can the G2 show up and, like, completely dominate, or are we going to see, yet again, G2 letting a team they should completely dominate stick around too much? And I do think it will happen, and I think they'll go three games. Um, now, I, I think there will be... I, I, think, <laughs> I think it will, just because of the simple fact that... And I feel like G2 would we'll try like, something. Yeah, they may like do something like mm-hmm. dumb. Like, you know what I mean? And like basically give Origin one win. And then they're like, all right, guys, let's be serious now. Let's I could see that. I could see that. I could see why that can go three. I'll go. I'll still go 2 0 with G2 just because it's. I'll agree with Kreppel on the B class players. But, um,. I'll, uh, but I, I could see that whole sense of, let's try something really quick. Let's see if this will work. Yeah. Like, I mean, Origin is not winning that series whatsoever. But mm-hmm. I, I, I have a I have an inclination it could go three games just because of that <laughs> Kyle, NA schedule, I have more interested or more vested games that I'm, I'm mm-hmm. willing to watch. Obviously, I'm skipping the Cloud9 Team Liquid one because, like I already said, Team Liquid's not winning that as much as I would want them to. They're not going to do that. I'm actually really interested in this Immortal Team Dig so am I. game, though. Um, Kyle, who do you think wins it? I think Dig comes out and shows what they should be, that they are better than the bottom tier teams, and I believe Immortals is the bottom of the bottom. And I think Dig will take it, but I do think it could possibly uh, go all three games just for the simple fact that I think Immortals will come out one game strong and then just look complete crap the next one, the last one. Um, I I want I want to agree with you, but for the sake of the show, because this is called The Rift, I will choose <laughs> Immortals. I think it's going to go three games. Um, so, uh, listeners, take my pick at whatever you think it is. Uh, <laughs> anyways, let's go to Saturday's game. I have torn between two games, um, but I'm going to let you choose this one. Which one are you interested in? I'm going Phoenix 1 and FlyQuest just because that's going to be a true, a really good test for both those teams. Phoenix 1 has been performing really well, and FlyQuest has obviously been extremely good. I mean, they did end up faltering against Echo Fox, which Echo Fox, again, is a very questionable team on what 
who's going to show up for that. But um, FlyQuest, man, it's going to be a good test overall. The FlyQuest looks dominant at times. So does Phoenix One. It's going to be a bloodbath, and it's going to be a really exciting game. I think it goes all three, and I think high shot calling will prevail even if they are behind. I think high wow. makes a play in the last game that ends up uh, being the game winner. Interesting. I, I'm I'm sorry as much as I do want to go for FlyQuest, so I guess <laughs> I didn't need to do for the sake of argument. Uh, I do think Phoenix 1 will take it. I think it'll be three games, and I think it'll be really close. Like, this is going to be, like, a really good series, guys. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you wanted to watch any one series, this, I feel like, is probably the best series to tune into. Um, and I will just mention it for the sake of mentioning it. I I know we talked about it in the the uh, the breakdowns, but that Team Liquid Immortals match is... You want to see which is going to be the bottom feeder, 9 and 10, right? It, it's basically, yeah. <laughs> I want to see, see which team... <laughs> Which where where my team liquid team should rank because they're gonna get slaughtered by the cloud nine game so I gotta get some false hope that they're not as bad if they beat immortals you know what I mean like yeah uh, give me a little hope as I head into week five and what <laughs> what's really interesting about that team that matchup right there is gonna be a really fun to watch the two junglers compete against each other on the opposite teams now like that that's gonna be a fun uh, a matchup that everybody should watch just for the sake of the junglers as well. Yeah, now I know this is a clear uh, match that we're going to be watching on Sunday, but we will have FlyQuest again in our uh, main watch, FlyQuest vs. Cloud9. Kyle, you probably have torn feelings because of your I, your old favorites. I do, versus but... your actual favorites. But, but I'm, dude, <laughs> Cloud9, man, I'm sticking to my guns with the Cloud9 brand, and... <laughs> I'm, I, I, they're going to take it, man. Cloud9 is just too good right now. That I mean, everyone in that team is playing really well, and it helps that you have another rookie jungler, such as Arcadian, that is performing extremely well. Granted, like the second matchup they had in the first week, uh, his rookie kind of came out, but but he's really bounced back and has performed really strong. I think it does go all three games, though, just for the sake of fact that it is the old versus the new, and, and I think FlyQuest is going to end up putting up a good fight for it, but I do think Cloud9 takes it at the end. Now, is this one where I can kind of call you a traitor because, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will I will say I agree with you. Um, Cloud9 is going to win, um, but I do feel if anyone will beat Cloud9, It'll it be would be high. yeah, it would be high. <laughs> it would be high. I <laughs> know as much as anything. High knows that team inside and out. You know, you know, contracts is new, but he knows that team. Like I don't <laughs> even know. Like I'll be disappointed that they did, but I don't know if I could even be mad at that either. Like just because <laughs> it's the old Cloud Nine team, and obviously FlyQuest. I, I'm hoping Cloud Nine finishes first, and I hope FlyQuest finishes second at the end of the split. <laughs> So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but anyways, I do agree. Cloud Nine wins. Uh, Kyle, anything else you want to add before we sign off from this episode? Nope, that was basically it. And uh, just want to point out as well, which you will make mention of the actual YouTube channel. But do check us out on YouTube now. I am going to be posting the videos on YouTube as well. If it is easier for anybody to go there, uh, we still will have them up on SoundCloud, obviously, but. We will have them in two places now. We will. And actually, I was about to mention that. So <laughs> make sure that you do follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at jculver28. That is J-C-U-L-V as in Victor, E-R, at 2028. And you can also find Kyle on Twitter at? At TFL Kaldum. That's T-F-L-K-Y-L-E-D-O-O-M. And make sure that you follow us and comment about the show or ask us any questions so we can answer them on the episode. Also, be sure to like us on SoundCloud and follow us and comment about any questions or what you thought about the show so, again, we can answer that and share it with your friends. And then on top of that, follow us on YouTube at Press Start. That is P-R-E-S-S. S-T-A-R-T, yes, like pressing start on your controller. Be sure to follow us over there where we will be posting the shows now and also share a comment on there where we can answer them for the show. 
We have so many places for us, you to interact with us, so just interact with us already. We're really wanting to get your feedback. <laughs> Anyways, for the last time on this episode, I am Jeremy Culver, a.k.a. Darcy. And I am Kyle Goddamn Gloria. Everyone, have a great week. Be sure to tune back next week as we will continue to review the news. The review.